think home means to me what it, what it means to everybody. And it's a place where you feel safe, you're protected, you know you can rely on a, a food source and, and family. There's generations and generations that have, that have grown up in Vail. And I think the same applies to the bighorn sheep. Historically, knowing about bighorn sheep in Colorado, the Goreen sheep are a native herd. They're endemic here. It's pretty unique to have that right here in our backyard in Vail, in this community. The bighorn sheep, it's an iconic American symbol, right? That animal is endemic to our continent, right? It's a North American animal. And I think that anybody that sees it really in their mind, it should sort of conjure ideas of wilderness and, and freedom, resiliency and, and power, you know, to live in those kind of places. You know, you see these, these sheep at, at, you know, high up on the mountainside in some really inhospitable places. Um, and it, it's kind of this icon of, of the Rocky Mountains to a certain extent, hearing them cracking, cracking horns together during the rut, echoing down some of these, you know, steep drainages, it's, it's pretty cool. Bighorn sheep are uh, not only an iconic species, they're a, a keystone species. Uh, bighorn sheep are doing well, other species tend to be doing well. There has to be a very specific set of biological conditions, geographical considerations for these animals to exist on the landscape. If they don't have access to steep escape terrain, access to cliffs, uh, certain south-facing aspects in the winter months, they just won't exist on the landscape. I think one of the worst things that could happen in Vail and to our community is that some of the longtime locals say there used to be bighorn sheep up there and now there's not. So 200 years ago, bighorn sheep were prevalent across North America with some estimates at around 2 million sheep. By 1915, due to disease, hunting, and habitat encroachment, there were only 7,000 bighorns left. By 1979, there were only 2,200. Today, due to conservation efforts, we've rebounded back to about 7,000 animals. And it's similar to elk, where we used to see 1,000 head of elk, and now we're lucky if we see 10. So, I think it's important for us to embrace that right now. We indoctrinate this into our community, into our culture, that we are the stewards of these bighorn sheep and their habitat on into the future. In the wildlife management realm, we talk a lot about limiting factors. One of those limiting factors is access, abundance, and quality of winter range. For those that are maybe unfamiliar with, with some of these limiting factors, you might look out across the Gore Range and see an abundance of habitat and miles and miles and miles of it. But that is, is all for naught if the size and availability of your winter range equates to the size of a postage stamp. If we don't have enough winter range, lower elevation down here by the valley, it won't support more sheep. This herd's winter range is unique in that it's in close proximity to the town of Vail. This creates friction and concern as the bighorn's future is directly tied to the decisions that are made in regards to development. So development impacts are twofold. One, it's the direct loss of habitat. You're forever changing the physical environment, be it new buildings, parking lots, roads, trails, other infrastructure. And then there's the indirect impact. We're introducing more people into this valley and that growth and human footprint radiates through the local environment. While we want to encourage outdoor recreation and the growth of our local economies, we want to do so in a manner that is sustainable, that is conducive to perpetuating these local species forever. It's pretty simple. If we want to keep Vail a special place and home to these bighorns, then trade-offs need to be made. It's important that we revisit our relationship with our environment. Development should be approached in a conscientious manner. It is the one thing that we do have absolute control over and can decide if and how it takes place. I think as education grows and, and just as individuals, we want to conserve and protect our wildlife, funding needs to flow in that manner as well. And I'm really excited about the Town of Vail's efforts. We now are using our community's tax dollars to go and contribute toward habitat improvement projects. It it's kind of goes back to the, I guess, the, the age-old philosophy of it's easier to keep something than it is to, you know, keep something and nurture something rather than having to, to go back and, and reintroduce something. And our hope is to avoid that. Um, we, we don't want to have to get involved if we don't have to. And that's a very important thing for bighorn sheep herds because once a herd is extirpated, they lose that cultural knowledge that's passed down from generation to generation. We can support 
hunters and anglers and recreators alike. There is enough room for all of us, um, but we have to be careful not to love our wilderness to death. It's important for us to look at them as a group and as a species, and in the long run, I want them to stay in these mountains forever, hopefully. I have a profound respect for how these sheep exist on the landscape. You know, they don't get to go home like you and I at the end of the day, and it's truly a remarkable thing to have locally, and we should consider ourselves lucky to, to be home to these bighorn. They call this place home, but they called this place home way before we ever called it home. And so it's our responsibility to make sure that, that these sheep have a place that they can call home long after we're gone.